Well, hello there. Welcome to Season 2, Episode 7 of the Still Becoming Podcast. Now, we're in the third episode of a mini-series I'm offering right now titled Walk in It, Shining the Light Along the Way. This is based on a message that I give to audiences in person. Now, if you haven't yet listened to the first two episodes of the mini-series, go back and listen to Episode 5 and 6, Season 2, and you'll be all caught up. Each episode builds one on top of the other. Thank you. It's my deepest desire through this series to provide you biblical, practical tools that you can use in your everyday walking around life to walk effectively, shining the light of Christ's love to a culture that is becoming increasingly hostile to what we believe. And so in episode six, I introduced the five L's of walking in it. And last episode was look at yourself, look at ourselves with introspection, because it all starts there. We have to have a right view of our own sinful selves before we can comment or have an opinion on anything else. It's important to approach this with humility. And the best way to do that is to look at ourselves. Today's episode will talk about loving people. I know it sounds so easy, doesn't it? But it isn't, especially when people don't believe the same things you do. So I'm going to give you some practical tools today that will help you do that because it is so vital to walking with Christ. The greatest commandment is to love God and the second is to love others. I welcome you to episode seven, Love People. Hi there, friends. Welcome to the Still Becoming podcast, a place where women like you and me find help to move from where you are to where you want to be. I'm your host, Laura Acuna. The Still Becoming podcast is where we gather to rethink our thinking about ourselves, our lives, and about our God. We will learn to reframe our shame and trade in limiting beliefs for the liberating truth from God's Word. And why the title Still Becoming? Because that's the Christian journey, isn't it? As we apply God's perfect Word to our lives for growth and change, we are always growing always learning, and still becoming the women He created us to be. It's never perfect, and it's not too late. Do I need to say that again? It is never perfect, and it is not too late. I am so glad you're here for the journey, and I'm praying that God will speak directly to you through today's episode. Are you ready? Let's go. Jesus replied, Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the first and greatest commandment, and the second is like it. Love your neighbor as yourself. Matthew 22, 37 to 39. Loving people is the second greatest commandment. And it kind of makes me think of a song, I'm dating myself. You know, they'll know we are Christians by our love, by our love. They will know we are Christians by our love. Many of you know that song. There's another one, Kumbaya, right? Hearts, flowers, bluebirds, a warm fuzzy. But if we're being completely honest, that isn't always the reality, is it? I want to talk with you today about loving and walking alongside people who are difficult. This is where we need help. Because of their brokenness, they can frustrate us and we may want to give up. And more importantly, This is why we must first look at ourselves. Our sin should be ever before us. Remember, we're on level ground, eye to eye. Sometimes we're the difficult people too. But if we do not humble ourselves, he will do it for us. Ask me how I know. It's happened over and over again on the path to maturity. I'm not there yet. I'm still becoming. But I know for certain that if we don't quickly humble ourselves and get our heads straight, he will do it for us because he loves us. Now, the word love means this, devotion, friendship, respect, tenderness, cherishing. And for the purposes of this episode, I'm choosing the word respect. Now, that might seem hard when people differ from you, but can we all agree that we can respect the fact that they're a fellow human being on the journey of life. Now, he doesn't call us to walk alongside everyone. That's codependent. But the truth is, 
If we walk closely with the Lord, He will send challenging situations and challenging people our way. And He will also call us to walk with people who may not be necessarily challenging or difficult, but their situation is hard, so heartbreaking that before we even get involved, we know our own hearts will probably end up broken too. So let's be honest sometimes loving people can be risky. We will walk in close proximity to someone else's pain, but he will never, remember, he will never ask us to do anything he doesn't give us the power to do. So let's talk about the challenging for a minute. Romans 5, 8 says this, but God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. He didn't wait to love us until we were all cleaned up. This was and is true for us, and it's true for them. You know, those difficult people that he's sending you to live in a harsh culture. So many people have been rejected. And in our culture today, people are disposable. But God's word tells us that's not true. Every single person is a beloved child of God, whether they know it or not. We know it. The Bible tells us that. And as Christians, we're responsible for what we know. And who's going to tell them about Jesus if we don't? Ephesians 5, 1 to 2, follow God's example, therefore, as dearly loved children and walk in the way of love, just as Christ loved us and gave up himself as a fragrant offering and sacrifice to God. With that in mind, we understand that people are not projects. They're not a problem to be solved, but a dear soul to be loved. But the reality is, again, loving people is hard. We might as well say so. There is a cost to it. It requires a denying of self. There is no me first. There is no expectation of anything in return. Not too long ago, I was agonizing over a very hard situation in my life. And I said to God, you know, nobody tells you how hard it is to love difficult people. But then he reminded me that Jesus actually challenges us to love everyone and not just the ones who love us back in the way we want to be loved. He even tells us to love our enemies. Matthew 5, 46. For if you love those who love you, what reward do you have? Do not even the tax collectors do the same? And then Rick Warren says this. God teaches us to love by putting some unlovely people around us. It takes no character to love people who are lovely and loving to you. So how do we do it? How do we love those who are challenging? Well, first, we must pray and ask the Holy Spirit for staying power. That's not a spiritual term, but I learned this when I took my counseling classes in school. In order to walk with those who are difficult, we must ask the Lord for the strength to stay, and that's called staying power. Generally, under our own steam and under our own power, we may feel like giving up or drop out of a relationship if we're not seeing the fruit that we're looking for. And we're not called to stick with everyone, and we must have healthy boundaries. But as we walk the walk of faith, what we will be called to do is to shine our light in difficult places, difficult situations, and with difficult people. It's all part of God's plan. And I'll remind you again, he never asks us to do anything he doesn't give us the power to do. Well, friends, I'm so excited to tell you that my new book, Still Becoming, Hope, Help, and Healing for the Diet-Weary Soul, has just been released. You can find it on my website, on Amazon, Barnes & Noble, Books A Million, ChristianBook.com, and other online retailers. Still Becoming is a 31-day devotional journal that takes you on a sacred journey where you'll discover true freedom and that healing and peace have nothing to do with the number on the scale. Join me and learn to rethink your struggles with disordered eating, body image, and dieting through the lens of self-compassion and God's grace. Colossians 3, 2 says, set your mind on things above, not on the things of earth. And what I've learned along the way is that I must have an eternal focus, be eternity minded. And what do I mean by that? Well, we're results oriented people. We like to see the fruit we're hoping to see. We love a dramatic testimony. And that's why it's so important to understand that God alone has the plan. And his plan includes so much more than what our minds can know. He has the whole picture of eternity when he works in our lives 
and in the lives of the people we're called to love and serve. It's his plan for each person to feel his love, to not be alone, and to have people who care for them. And he always leaves the 99 to go for the one. Normally, when I share this with audiences, I play a video of a song called For the One by Bethel Music. I'll link it in the show notes, but I want to read you just some of the lyrics. Let me be filled with kindness and compassion for the one, the one in whom you love and gave your son. For humanity, increase my love. Help me to love with open arms like you do, a love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. Because oh, how you love us, from the homeless to the famous and in between. Because you formed us, you made us carefully. Because in the end, we're all your children. So help me to love with open arms like you do. A love that erases all the lines and sees the truth. Oh, that when they look in my eyes, they would see you. Even in just a smile, they would feel the Father's love. So let all my life tell of who you are and the wonder of your never-ending love. Oh, let my life tell of who you are, that you're wonderful and such a good father. And it goes on. I love that song. It's such a reminder and honestly convicting that we're to love everyone. We're not called to walk alongside everyone, but we're called to walk alongside a few. And if you feel that nudge inside your heart that you can go a little farther with someone who's having a hard time, someone who's challenging in your Bible study circles, someone who doesn't have a friend, you can be assured that God will give you staying power. In some ways, this is a big subject because we need to be really clear what God's calling us to do. We have to be able to understand that even though we're results-oriented people and we want to see people coming to Christ because of something that we've done, that doesn't always happen. In fact, we bring the obedience and God brings the harvest. And that's why we have to keep an eternal mindset that we have no idea what God is doing in the spiritual realm with his children. We need to trust him and obediently love people. We live in a culture right now where everybody is so righteous and anyone who disagrees is evil or toxic or crazy. That's just not true. So in the few minutes we have left before we do our soul fitness exercise, and prayer, I, I want to say this to you. Turn off the news. Turn off the talking heads. Get off of any platform that incites you to look at people, God's children, as the enemy. Please. That's not his best for us. I've had to turn it off too. And it's made all the difference. Every single person is a child of God, whether they know it or not. But you know it. And I know it because that's what the Word of God tells us, and we're responsible for what we know. And now for soul fitness, strengthening your core. Opening up your journal, I want you to write a few questions down. Am I willing to risk my own heart for the sake of another? Am I willing to run toward pain in order to love someone who needs Jesus? Am I willing to love even if the ending is not what I hoped it would be? Answer those questions honestly and ask God to reveal to you, you may already know, who he's calling you to and spend some time in Selah, quiet, pause, ponder, pray, and see what he says. And now as we end, let me pray for you. Lord, help us to be light bearers. We wouldn't need to be light bearers if it wasn't so dark out there. Help us, Father, to remember that there are people all around us right now who desperately need to know your love. And we are the vehicle that you use in this world. Lord, help us to be disciplined about who we listen to and how much negativity we're going to allow into our spirit. Help us not to be divisive, but to be unified. Help us to see each person out there as your beloved child. Help us shine the light so that those who are lost can find their way home. In Jesus' name, amen. Well, girlfriends, that's it for today's episode. But before you go, will you please hit subscribe or follow at the button at the top of this page? And while you're there, will you please leave me a review? This small ask 
helps the Still Becoming podcast reach more women who need this life-giving message. And if you've been listening for a while and would like an opportunity to support the Still Becoming podcast, I have a fun way that you can do that. You can buy me a coffee. This is an inexpensive way to help my ministry, and it's a little silly too. The link, along with all the others, is in the show notes. May God bless you until we meet again. I'll see you next time on the Still Becoming Podcast.